very scary. It if I is. knew it was like in like wall in my womb, if it was like that, I'd be like freaking out. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah it's like even hearing that, you're like, Jesus. So first and foremost, we got to talk about Virgin Atlantic. I know that you guys are helping people find love through travel. So tell me a little bit about the partnership here. Yeah, so we, so the Bachelor helped us find love and now we're going to help other people find <laughs> love through Virgin Atlantic. First of all, we love Virgin Atlantic. It's an incredible airline. Every, anyone who's flown Virgin like knows that it's pretty it's awesome. Great. And their first class, which is what these people are going to be going, traveling on. Is insane. Amazing. Upper class, they call it. Yes. So on March 11th, uh, uh, there'll be eight tickets that are given away. The campaign ends February 13th, so you have to sign up fast. So all you have to do is go to Virgin. Yeah, the, it, I want to give the correct website because it's a little obscure, but it's verge.in slash love. So it's V-I. Yeah, Verge, V-I-R-G dot I-N slash love. And all you have to do is pitch your story by February 13th to Virgin Atlantic as to why you should win a ticket to love. Now these tickets, there's eight of them. You're going to and get the chance to fly in Virgin Atlantic's upper class from New York to London on March 11th with seven other contest winners that are all single. So you guys can all mingle, have fun. It's a bonding experience. You're gonna get a free glass of champagne upon boarding. Three it's meals on board. Three meals, it's, it's, it's very lavish. For six hour flight. So, so you're gonna be very full. Yeah. Then you go to London, you have a weekend stay at the Standard Hotel, which is world renowned. Uh, it's an incredible experience. Plus, you're going to have a chance to hopefully find love overseas, which is really cool because, you know, with The Bachelor, we travel a lot. We go on these lavish dates. A lot of people don't get to experience those dates, and this is an opportunity to do that. And those dates bond you. Just something about traveling bonds you. And then there's something about, like, your mindset when you travel. You just... I feel like you are, I know it sounds corny, but like way more open to love. Yeah, 100%. And like flirting and, and mingling with strangers and isn't all it, that. Isn't it a little bit everybody's like fantasy or dream to travel abroad, abroad or go on vacation and that's where you fall in love? It's a movie. That's like yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that brings me to your love story. I mean, you guys kind of ultimately fell in love in Mexico, right? That's when it finally clicked and everything happened with you guys. Technically, well, well, we, we met each other in Mexico. Mexico, but then Jared came out about his feelings in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. So that's a really great point. It took like this trip and like an epic, it was really, he like wanted to do it in St. Lucia. He didn't want to do it at home in LA. Wow, it's so much more epic. He was like, what, why was that that you didn't want to do in LA? Well, because you were like, what am I supposed to do? Like ask her to go yeah. like to lunch or coffee? It's like the way I'm gonna- Say it there. Yeah, the way I'm gonna confess my feelings to Ashley is by asking her to- <laughs> On her couch. Yeah, to go to like w w coffee bean. Like <laughs> what are we doing here? So there was a, we had a trip to St. Lucia plan with a couple of our friends. So um, long story short, I screwed up with my, uh, my passport so I was not able to go when they went but I was still able to get it rectified when I had one day left literally one day like 28 mm -hmm. hours I was there for like 12 hours uh but flew down there and uh you know confessed my feelings and so here we go now we're kiss me dramatically in the airport I, I mean kiss her very see airport. like you need travel to yeah. open up yeah. Tickets to love, check it out. <laughs> I love it, I love it. If I was single, I would be applying. That sounds like an amazing trip. <laughs> well, you guys, you both look amazing considering you had baby Dawson just days ago, basically. So how are you doing? Are you sleeping? We're sleeping, yeah. uh, like not well, I mean, yeah. through the night. No, but, we don't, but we get six we're hours getting of sleep our sleep. Yeah. So, I mean, for a newborn. Well, he's been, just been amazing because he lets me sleep in. I've been sleeping until 10, which is like, it's like almost like, don't tell other moms that. That's so rude. <laughs> but he, like, he no, will like switch rude. off with the feet. Like I'll like do like the good night uh, feeding and um, bed, you know, change. And then yeah. he'll do it. And then I'll do like the five, I'll do like the five o'clock. And then he'll do like the 8.30, yeah. nine o'clock AM. And then he lets me sleep. So. Yeah. Well, in the morning, so, you know, just feed him and then he falls asleep and it's just kind of taking care of his. Wow, that's that's pretty amazing. How is, I know it's always a personal question, but how is your breastfeeding journey going for you so far? I know for me, it was a super struggle. So how's that going? I'm, I'm not breastfeeding. So that's made everything a little bit easier. You're not breastfeeding. Yeah. So that has been um, kind of like a, 
a nice way for my body to just take a break yeah. and for Jared to do, you know, well, he's been doing more than 50%, honestly, as other parts of my body heals. And yeah. he- uh, Well, she went through nine months of pregnancy. <laughs> I can do 70, 30 right now, you know? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. What, what went behind that decision, if you don't mind me asking, was there a specific reason that you just didn't want to do it? Um, it was really just me knowing that I was going to fr probably be a better version of myself for him. Um, if I was as well rested as possible and because the past nine months have been so hard on my body, um, I just kind of wanted to have all my focus on him and not to have like any sort of like struggle that distracted me from being my best self. I mean, I'm a huge fan of you saying that, and I think that will help other people who are in that same situation as well. I, I made it six weeks and that was with formula from day one. So uh, kudos to you for being open about that. That's really cool. I just, I've had so many people say that they tried for a very short period of time and it just like stressed them out so much. And I was like, I don't want to stress myself out um, during like, more than I have to during this huge life change. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And it's absolutely. been really good for us so far. And he, he, had, really good for him. he loves his bottles and he is just like never given us an issue with eating. Like he no. slurps it down. That's great. That's awesome. He's such a good baby. It's crazy. Um, I know that the fourth trimester, as they call it, can be hard with postpartum recovery, mentally, physically. How has that been going for you? I, so far, so good. Like, yeah. physically, I know I'm pretty sore still. Uh, but yeah. besides that, uh, everything's been really good. I'm, of course, like, I could cry at the drop of a hat, but not in, like, an alarming way. Uh, not in a way that I'm worried for myself or anything. I think it's funny because I I look at him and I'm like, I'm worried about being worried. You know what I mean? Because well, yeah. I'm I get it. going to worry about you now and like every stage in your life, there's going to be like another worry. So well, I think we're just, it's new parents, right? Everybody goes through this. You're worried about everything. Literally in the middle of the night, we hear him go like, <sighs> And I'm yeah. like, oh my God, he's choking. And so you get up. I'm like, is he and like, like okay, no, he's fine. What are we doing? Spit up, you know, right? Or it's like, is is his um like is he like sucking on his his swaddle type thing, you know? So yeah. 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 There's something. I'm sure many people have told you, but it doesn't end. <laughs> but it's a good worry. It's it's a good yeah. it's all good. Um how what's kind of like the best advice that you were given before you became parents that you were like oh wow i've actually used that advice already hmm that is a good question um advice you can impart to other people that you've just learned naturally in the last few days weeks well i mean i'll say this I like was freaking out. I was one freaking out about birth, like labor and delivery, yeah. like so fearful of it. And mm. that went fine. Yeah. Um, so I would also like, I, I'm kind of excited to like tell girls about like how that went, especially since like I terrified people about pregnancy because that was yeah. so hard. For me. Um, but I think with, with the first week or so of parenting, I was so scared. I was like, Jared, how are we going to know what to do? I haven't read any books on parenting. I know nothing, but like it, it, when people say that it's instinctual, like it actually is kind of instinctual. Yeah. And yeah. it's pretty, like once you get into the routine, you, it, it's simple-ish. Yeah, I guess um, another uh, piece of advice I guess I'd give new parents is just to breathe. <laughs> Uh, and to remember that this is a very chaotic, but also wonderful time in your life. Um, and then there's gonna be times where your baby's just screaming and you're doing everything you can and he's still screaming and that's okay. We just, don't really have, that's we what we're scared many, of. We haven't had too many outbursts yet, but there's been times where he's just screaming and you're like, your diaper's clean, you're fed, you're comfy. I don't know what's wrong with you, but. We figured it. We've we usually figured, figured it out. It out. Um, but I guess that's my other piece of advice. It's just like, don't. I I can see why people just like lose their crap for a second and try not to do that. Just breathe and remember that like you have a child and you know 
you have a roof over your head and, and things are good. Oh, that's great. You mentioned your birth story and I know that uh, Jared had posted right after you gave birth to you that everything was going, it went really well. So can you share a little bit about that, about your birth, birth plan or story? Uh, yeah, the, well, you know, uh, I was just so scared. Well, rightfully so. Like it's <laughs> being in labor, even just for me being in the room, it's scary for a woman. I mean, you think about it, you just like, there's so there's many, so many ways it can go wrong well, wrong and like you just like everybody has a different story and every pregnancy and every birth is different so like i can't guarantee that next time it's gonna be like any you know it could be a totally different experience even we did we found out after the fact that the umbilical cord was wrapped around yeah which, which is like rather common but still like very scary it if is. i knew it was like in like wall in my womb if it was like that i'd be like freaking out yeah it's just yeah, yeah it's like even hearing that you're like jesus because you hear you know a lot of stories so. yeah so um basically it was was really fast we found out at really on fast. thursday at my like regular routine weekly checkup that i was three centimeters dilated then and i had not felt anything so i was like oh well that's actually comforting that's when i actually started feeling better about yeah, everything. your body's getting ready yeah i was like oh well if i could be dilated that fast without feeling anything then maybe like they were telling me it's like your body is like very much like in preparation mode and it like looks like it's like on the right track so that made me feel better he came down from rhode island and uh because like that was a whole other sideline of our story and then they told me that i probably had like 24 to 48 hours and it ended up being like 72 hours i it was one in the morning, I was like watching Seinfeld in bed, turned off the TV. And then like 20 minutes later, like on the verge of falling asleep, I like felt, I was like, is that a cramp? Because I had been a little crampy and mildly. And then I was like, or is that a contraction? I was like, I'll give it like one more time, see how it goes. <clears throat> and then it was like 20 minutes later and I was like, hmm, okay, one more and we're gonna wake up Jared. And then I woke him up and like between and like my first contraction and like getting the epidural was two hours, I'd say. And uh, then Dawson was born nine hours after my first contraction. And yeah, like, probably only about seven hours after we've been at the hospital. Yeah. Oh, wow. So since it was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Girl, it was a God, it was a total game changer. I really was only was. in like pain for like an hour because the oh. first hour felt like intense period cramps. Mm -hmm. And then it was like an hour when we were in like triage, like checking in where I was like, okay, where's the drugs? And then I went up to the other room and it's I got tough, the drugs. Though. It's tough even as a, as a husband, just being there. Well, it's not tough, obviously your situation is far harder. But my point being is that like, I'm grateful you took the epidural because it's just hard seeing you in yeah, pain. Right. And yeah. like she was in serious pain the first hour, like every couple of minutes, like, here we go. Here's another one. Like you got to get through it. They went through, they so. came, they went from being 20 minutes to like two Four. minutes, you yeah. know, within like an hour. Yeah, it, was it was crazy. Fast. It was fast. Um, but like my, my OBGYN team <laughs> practice, like they were so incredible and it made me feel so comfortable the entire time. I know it's so weird. I mean, I know we're just talking up a story. Yeah, I, I apologize know. <laughs> about this. But it's so weird, as you know, like you're in the hospital room with yeah. nurses that literally are, you know, it's like I'm holding a foot, they're holding a foot, like everybody's doing their part, and the nurses help bring our son into this world, and I will never see them again. I like, know. Sure. It's so weird. They yeah. do that multiple I brought like chocolates the next day. I had like my mom or husband drop them off, and I, but I didn't even get to see them to hand them. <laughs> yes, I need to send something. Thank you. <laughs> well, with COVID, there's a lot of restrictions too. So I was like, are they even allowed? I don't know. Who knows? But um, but anyway, as I was saying, you know, it, since it, you had a positive birth story, is this making you want to do it again right away? I know it's ridiculous to ask that when your baby's a few days old, but. Well, I had nine hours of labor, which was as probably easy as you could get. But I had nine months of pregnancy, was was which was very horrible. So no, I didn't forget. Like most people are like, oh, you're gonna forget about all the uncomfortability of pregnancy. I'm like, no. <laughs> I actually I had hypermesias HG, um, probably 
on the scale of HG, probably on the lighter end because I would have like days of relief and Zofran really helped me. But I like was dehydrated basically for nine months because like liquids just like, <clears throat> yeah, so just I'm on. not trying to run into pregnancy again, but it will, you know, two, two and a half years apart is how much he's apart from his sister and how much I'm apart from my sister. And I do think that's like an ideal situation. So we'll, we'll ask us again in a year and a half or so. Yeah. How long did your nausea last? Mine lasted about 17 weeks. Mine, I stopped. The last time I threw up was like the first or second week of my third trimester. So the third wow. trimester was actually my easy trimester, okay. which is totally rare for people to say. Yeah. I was the most comfortable time. Wow, yeah. And you do not forget that, Nisha. That is like, <laughs> when people are like, oh, you'll forget it. No, you don't. <laughs> When you have like a stomach virus, you like know there will be an end. And like with the pregnancy nausea, you're like, I don't know when this is gonna end. Sorry, there are deer walking yeah, outside our windows. And, the, and uh, they're very calmly crossing the street and our dogs are Wow, alive. there's like six of them, sorry. Wow, wow. no, that's beautiful. Um, oh, you're, the name, you obviously already spoke to us about the name Dawson. Um, you added the middle name Brady, right? We did. Tell us about, about the story there. Okay. So, so it started on Saturday. Well, <laughs> let's obviously, not obviously, for those of you who don't know, I am a massive Tom Brady fan. He's my favorite athlete of all time. He was a starting quarterback for the Patriots when I was 12 years old, and I've been rooting for him ever since. Uh, he really feels like an extended family member. All of like, my family and friends, it's the funniest thing. Like When we first started dating, she'd come over for Christmas. She'd be like, literally, Brady is like the third thing that you and your family talk about. It's like, hey, how's it going? Merry Christmas. Yo, you see Brady on Sunday throwing those bombs? And so anyway, we all knew that I was going to be very depressed when Tom Brady retired. And of course, we're in the hospital with my son. Well, on Saturday when all the rumors were happening, yeah, I mean, like, I could go on, we can go on and on, but like so, on rumor, we started thinking, I knew that I was gonna pop because they told me, you know. It was gonna happen any day. Any moment. And he, the rumors of him retiring were happening. And then he, he was like, should we, should we like. Because initially we weren't gonna name him Tom or Brady. Cause it was just like, oh no, I, I mean, I love him, but come on. Instagram caption when we announced that he was a boy. Um, my caption was, no, his name will not be Tom or Brady. And Everybody. <laughs> you, do you, if I had a nickel for the amount of people that come up to me and say, so is his name going to be Brady? Yeah. Yeah. Are you naming him Brady? I'm like, no, no. We already so, had a dog named Brady. His family dog was Brady. So, so move, fast forward, all of a sudden the retirement rumors come out. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, cause she's about to pop. And then we're in the hospital the day after he's born. They're we're giving sitting us there the birth certificate to sign and Brady announces his retirement. Officially, it's over. And I'm like, oh my gotta do God. It. So then I was thinking, I'm like, this is just, am I really, are we really not gonna name our son after this man the day, <laughs> like we're in the hospital and he was retiring now? It's too much of a yeah. sign. Yeah. yeah. So then we're like, Dawson, Dimitri, Brady, Hayden. And I actually really love the sound of it. I love it too. Yes. And I'm so happy that we named him after Tom because he's Tom's been so impactful in my life. And uh, you're going to hear stories about Tom Brady. Yeah. Yes, you are. Have Leo or Tom reached out yet to thank you? Yeah, yeah Leo. <laughs> Wait, Giselle's men. Both. Do yeah, Giselle should be the one reaching out. Even after her you two named my <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, if you have a girl, it's got to be Giselle. <laughs> oh, <that's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take credit when it happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Giselle. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> so how has your marriage and your relationship kind of changed? I know, again, it's only been a few of very short amount of time, but have you seen each other change? Well, I mean, Jared is just as helpful and wonderful as I always knew that he would be, but like maybe even more so, like I know him and like he offers, he's like, I'll change him, I'll change him, I'll change him. And I'm like, you just like changing him, don't you? Like you just kind of like taking care of him. Like he's like- Well, I definitely like taking care know, of him. No, he does because this is what he did with Lois. And I kind of I kind of knew he'd be like this because of Lois. Like when we stay at my parents, my mom will feed our dog in the morning and he's like 
your mom keeps feeding Lois. I want to feed Lois. Like, I want to take care baby. of her. That's, That's my baby. That's my baby. And and he's like the same with him, where I'm like, I'll go change him. And he's like, no, I got it. And like, he just, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to argue with you. If you want to go there. Yeah, like, your dad's got to take care of you. But he, he's, Jared, I literally just, I mean, the ultimate I don't know. He's just so perfect. Oh, that's he's true, like but... legitimately so perfect. I just don't understand him. Then Ashley, I mean, he's like, and Ashley is, you know, on the couch, like icing her cha cha. Yeah, recovering, <laughs> which is huge. I think I, I started appreciating Ashley more during uh, pregnancy because what? Well, it's because you were going through such a rough. <laughs> no, my mom's laughing in the yeah, background. Your mom is... I think that was an unrelated laugh, but it is hilarious that no, you're laughing. Maybe, that way. Um, but because of all the pain that you were going through and how uncomfortable you were twenty four seven. I complained twenty four seven. Well, I mean, and rightfully so. It sucked. I felt bad for you. Um, you know, constantly throwing up, constantly feeling sick, constantly feeling <laughs> debilitated to the point where you couldn't really do things, um, and it just wasn't easy. And so I think I appreciated more and more for that. Um, and even now, you, you know, she's still in pain. Like she gets up, you know, we switch off every night or excuse me. So like, I'll take like the one o'clock change and then she'll take the four in the morning one. But even when you get up at four, like I see you and like, I can see you getting out of bed oh, and it's, you're still in pain and you're not being like, Jared, you do it. I can't do it anymore. Like you still get up and do it. I love that. Uh, what has been, what has surprised you the most about becoming a parent? I think just like how it comes naturally uh, like that like people say like oh it's like instinctual and, and stuff and you'll kind of know what he wants yeah uh, I was like, freaking out I was like I don't know like how I was like we're gonna be parents I don't know how to be a parent uh, this is also kind of crazy but like super honest we keep we kept saying we're like how are we gonna love anything more than our dog we're like it's gonna be really weird because like he's going to be born and then we're still going to feel like it's maybe tied with Lois. And then we, we got home and we're right there. Don't say I know. Lois. We definitely love Dawson more. Yeah. And it's very sad to admit that. And but I, I'm like, Lois, I feel guilty saying that, I but know. then I feel even more guilty. And Lois, saying. we love you so much, but yes, we, we love you more. Dude, we love you more. Um, you know what the biggest surprise thus far has been? And this is going to be uh not a happy story, but uh, in labor, you know, it was very emotional seeing him, you know, come into this world and Ashley pushing and like he's crying and it was, it's like, holy crap, this is my son. And it was a very emotional moment. Having said that, I, was not, I was not like overly whelmed with this like- Overly whelmed. Or, or like, <laughs> o- or like overcome with this feeling of unconditional love for my son. And in the moment, I felt like a very evil human being because all I've been told is that, like, as soon as this kid is born, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel this unconditional love. People need to cool it with that. And I felt so guilty because I'm like, oh, my God, I'm a psychopath. I don't love my son. No, you're not. Because we I was lucky enough to talk to like his sister who had a baby, her first baby in November, said that she did not feel this overwhelming like thing like seeing the lights because some people say it's like a spiritual oh, yeah. experience like, so many people they like see heaven and shit and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> your mom says that about how you were born um and we just we didn't feel that way and, and but like shannon made me feel so much better by saying that and me knowing before it happened and then even lauren from 90 day fiance if you, you guys you know her she told me when i was interviewing on her podcast she's like i felt like i didn't bond with my baby for one of them until like three weeks is when I started feeling that attachment. Jared and I started feeling the attachment, honestly, like, within hours. Within hours, so yeah. like that night. And then now, yeah. like, I love him more than anything in yeah. this world. Yeah. And I, he's just, he's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's yeah. so weird. I'm glad and it happened fast I, for I, us, I, yeah. but like, it definitely didn't happen instantaneously. No, I almost want to tell people that. Like, yeah. don't have this expectation because maybe like me, you're going to feel like a horrible person for the first couple hours. And that's not what you want to feel when your son enters this world or your daughter. So I don't know. That's probably was the biggest surprise this far. Yeah. That's interesting. And I, I totally agree with you. Everyone's story is so different. So anytime anyone gives this like definite rule, I'm always, I hate that. Cause it's like, no, that's not the case. And just about the dog. I want to, you know, my daughter at, sorry, she's loud. 
Um, she's 14 months and my dog is still the background on my phone because I'm too, I can't change it. I feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 1000 percent. No, you can't change it. My dog no. impressed with years ago is still the background on my phone. So next question I wanted to ask is who from Bachelor Nation has met him or who will meet him first from, from your Bachelor crew? Nobody's met him. And it's so sad because <laughs> it's only been 10 days, but we're very excited for Tanner and Jade to meet him because we've grown so close with their kids. Um, of course, Nick and Ben. I'm very excited for Nick uh, yeah, me too. because- Oh my God, his response, his text was so cute. Yeah, he's, he's just such, such a, a mush. he's such a mush at, at his core. Uh, and you know, he's got like this layer where he doesn't let people penetrate, but I think that human, I think Nick was meant to be a father. Oh my gosh. Like if I like had to be born to somebody, like Nick is somebody I would like to be born to. I agree. And uh, <laughs> I almost want, we, we, we were like joking, but not joking that we were kind of want to make him the godfather. Because <laughs> it would just kind of be hilarious. I love uh, that. I, I, I'm very excited for Dean <laughs> and Ben. Put that in his mind now. Now the headlines. I know. Are gonna be <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, a lot. Alon Gale, who used to be an executive producer of the show, who's mm -hmm. very close to us. Yes. I'm so excited for for him to meet Dawson. Um, there's so many people from Bachelor. I, I, you know, I really am excited for for you to meet meet our friends and family, bro. Yeah. Well, that's so sweet. Yeah. Who do you think will be next to to start to have a baby in Bachelor Nation? Mm. That's a good question. You know who I would love, but it's not going to happen. Dean and Galen. A thousand percent. Yeah, they'd be good parents. I would love for Dean and um, I think Nick and Natalie, uh, yeah. uh, you know, we'll probably start, hopefully, maybe we'll see. Uh, I mean, I don't want to put pressure on No, them. I could see that in like the next two years. Ben and Jess. Um, yeah, Ben and Jess too. I mean, I know those aren't like traditional bachelor couples, but those are like the, the characters, I feel like. Who who else is like together that just got married? Or I mean, like Michelle and Nate are talking, you know, she. I'd give them a couple years too. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking like within the next year. Oh, maybe Jason and Caitlin. Oh, yeah. 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 That's so that's weird. Uh, Jason would be a great dad. Caitlin mm. would be a great mom too. Yeah. Caitlin would be the fun mom. Yeah. Like the mom that, like, when the, if she has a daughter, they'll be best friends. Jason's going to be like a, like, sitcom dad, like, just classic dad. John, what well, is going to be John Stamos? What's his name? You mean Uncle Jesse? Uncle Jesse, he's gonna be like an Uncle Jesse, or is he gonna be like a Bob Saget and make you want to make us cry? I thought Uncle Jesse made you cry too, no? Mm, no. Okay. I mean, I guess he, you know, he was a dad too to Nikki and Alex on the show. You're That's right. what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's been a while. I could watch you guys all day. Um, <laughs> last question for this part is uh, Do you see his Johnson's personality come out so far? What are you seeing? Are you seeing either one of you in him? Not for We're trying. It's so hard. It's he's so like literally he sleeps with his arms up, and I'm like, oh, he sleeps like his dad. He definitely sleeps like, like his dad, dad, but like he's like, way chiller than both of us. So <laughs> my dad keeps joking that like he has his aunt's brain because my sister is like she was very sleepy as a as a baby, and it's just very like whatever. I'm very excited to uh, see his personality grow though, and see who he's like more. Um, to see like who, who who is he? Who's Dawson? Who are you? I love it. 